guys, it's Mara. Um, today I want to talk to you about the process of getting a drug screen done. So first of all, when you come in, most of the time, um, if you get a drug screen done, unless it's for pre-employment, which they can use these ones too, um, it's usually a post-accident. Um, if it's a post-accident and you have uh, a DOT like license, um, then there's the DOT drug screen, which is a little more in depth. Um, if you had an accident like driving a big uh, tractor trailer or something like that. But this is just a normal accident, say you hurt your hand at work, um, or it can also be for reasonable suspicion, which is basically they just think you're on something and so they want to get it checked. So this is what one of the forms can look like. Um, we use MedTox. There are a lot of different, um, I guess, providers. Um, well, I don't know if there's a lot, but MedTox is a popular drug screening one. Um, so when you come in, we will fill out this information uh, or, you know, the hospital or a lab or wherever you go to get it done. Um, so you'll have your employer name, it'll have their fax number, it'll have your name, and it'll have the reason for the test which is pre-employment, random, reasonable suspicion, return to duty, so if you were off the job and now you're coming back on, follow up or post accident. Um, basically, if everything is negative, then we'll send it on um, to our records, where if it's positive or we don't put positive, we put non-negative, um, and that just means there could be uh, something interfering and making the drug go positive or you really are on something. So um, that will get sent off to the toxicologist and they will run you know the more specific tests to see what kind of drugs that they're positive for and the person may be on um, that kind of medication and so it's just making sure they're not taking something illegally. Um, so yeah. Um, the next thing is so there are two main tests that we do here that's a five panel and a ten panel. So the five panel drugs test for, get my little paper, um, okay, those are amphetamine, cocaine, opiates, phenocyclidine, and cannabis, so THC. Now there are different cutoff levels for each drug, you can go online and see um, what kind they have, if you're real extra you're worried about it. Um, but, so it's, I have a little paper here. Now, drugs in your system, it really depends on the acidity uh, of your body. So when you're more acidic, I'm pretty sure things go out. Um, yeah, when you're more acidic, things will go out of your body faster. And that works, that's, with amphetamines especially um, because with amphetamines if you're in acidic condition which most of the time if you're taking amphetamines you're going to be more acidic anyway um, but it's one to three days but if you're in alkaline condition it's three to ten days so that's a big difference um, THC single use it stays from one to seven days um, chronic use it's usually less than 30 days but the more fat you have, um, the THC can store in those uh, fat deposits. So skinnier people get rid of it faster. Um, opiates, one day. Heroin, one to three days. Codeine, one to three days. Barbiturates, um, depends if they're short acting or long acting, up to six days or up to 16 with the long acting ones. Um, benzos, one to 12. Um, meth. At acidic conditions 1 to 3, alkaline conditions 3 to 10. So it's the same for amphetamines and methamphetamines. Okay, what else? PC, oh, cocaine's up to 5 days, um, and it says 1 to 3 days are typical, that it stays in your system. Uh, PCP, 1 to 8 days uh, for single use, chronic use is up to 4 weeks, and oxycodone is 1 to 3 days. So it just kind of gives you an idea of how long um, those drugs stay in your system. So here is a little chart that when you, so a person will go into the bathroom, we will turn off the water, we'll flush the toilet so there's no water in there, and then we put one of these little tablets 
and that turns the water blue. So obviously if they're trying to dilute it out, the sink, the tap water would be off and then the toilet, you can obviously see there's blue in there and it would be blue in their cup. Um, there's a fill line on the urine cup where you have to have at least that amount. Um, there will be these little charts on the side of the cup so you can kind of compare the colors. Um, so a normal pH is anywhere from four to eight on a urine. Um, the abnormal range for the pH is anywhere from two to three and that's usually um, an adulterant can make it more acidic or more basic depending on what they put in there, try to put bleach or whatever that would make it uh, more alkaline. So that could be abnormal from the 10 to 11 range. So you can see that's kind of a green color versus a reddish pink color. Okay, specific gravity. So specific gravity of water is one. So if they just somehow had water in there, that would be considered abnormal. But the normal range is 1.003 to 1.020. So you can kind of see the color change from a dark blue all the way to like a yellow orange color. Um, next thing is nitrites. So negative nitrite um, can be, let's see, anywhere from, it's like a white to a pink and normally on our UA dipstick the pink color is a nitrite. Um, but if it's a really dark or even yellow then that's considered abnormal. Now a lot of adulterants will go positive for nitrites. I'm not sure what people put in them to make them positive for nitrites, but it does. And last thing um, is oxidants, another adulterant. Um, they can be positive if the color chart looks anything similar to these versus like a clear or light green or like a beige white color. So um, you'll, the person will go to the bathroom, they'll come out. Um, if anything is abnormal on the drug screen or the kind of the color comparison chart screen, um, then we will, um, on this form, we'll have to fill out a non-negative result and then I would sign it or whoever's collecting it along with the actual person's signature. And then these labels here at the bottom, they would label, uh, we would pour off the urine, we would put the labels on the new, two new separate containers where you have to have at least, um, they like to have 30 in one and then at least 15 in the second one and that's an extra confirmation to send off if there's more than one drug. Um, and then they will, the, the person getting the drug screen done will sign an initial on date on the two separate containers saying, hey, I watched them board off, they didn't add anything, um, and this is my urine. And they also have to sign the second sheet to say they didn't add anything to it. Um, and then it gets sent off to confirm whatever kind of drug is in it, and if the person is on um, those drugs, if they're allowed to be on whatever it is, is prescribed or not. So that's pretty much it. Um, I don't have what the actual migration looks like on the drug screen. Um, I'll put up a picture here, but there is on the side of the cup, if there's a line there, then that's negative. The absence of the line is actually a positive test or non-negative. Um, and so with that, then that's it's a presumptive positive and it will get sent off um, to the toxicologist and they'll run their, uh, what's it called, LCMS, liquid, liquid chromatography mass spec, yeah. And that's like the gold standard for drug screening versus, or for drug, not just the drug screen. So yeah, I hope you guys um, learned some valuable information. And thank you guys for watching. Bye.